Chamba. Kupata lazima nishike kama sikiza tuni yako. Bonyeza star 811 star 962 hash. Lazima nishike mapema. Na sasa hivi ushika hesabu mapema utakaasirika. Una job mimi nikiwa moto wa marathon na kwa niko na experience kabisa. Niko na experience. If you don't hurry, you will not break the record. Okay, kwacha nishike hesabu. Kupata lazima nishike bonyeza star 811 star 962 hash star 811 star 962 hash Come on I'm the photographer Black Milk I have an exhibition in 8 weeks about how things get better with time Let's go Darling Fluffy Kinky inspired me Amazing. I'm seeing how the twists blend with her hair over time. How she actually feels more confident. I'm a king when it's like the world stops spinning. Perfect. There's yeah, this perfect. I'm a king when it's like the world stops spinning. She's really more beautiful every week. That's definitely worth celebrating. Darling Fluffy Kinky. Twists that get better every day. Just like you. It's 1 p.m. East African time. Good afternoon. This is KBC Lunchtime News. Glad you could make time for the most comprehensive news in the country. My name is Bentro Njue and Byron Abuli will be our sign language interpreter for this live newscast. Let's keep this interactive on all our social media platform as we are live. Appreciate your comments, suggestions or even where you are watching us from. Now straight to the news. We begin at the coast where gender-based violence activists in Kilifi County are demanding the immediate, immediate arrest of a police officer based in Marereni, Magarini sub-county, who allegedly defiled a minor in January this year. The activist claimed that the minor aged 16 has been staying at the child rescue center for six months now and is yet to join Form 2 owing to the trauma. Our reporter Pauline Nassimiu has more details. The chairperson of Malindi Gender-Based Violence Network, Helda Lamek, say they raised the same issue in March this year, but no action has been taken against the suspect. She now wants the case expedited for justice to prevail. Our security team, tafadali, matiangi tunajua hiyo kazi unaiweza tu sana. Tafadali, tafadali, tafadali. Peleke ikesi kotini. Acha koti yeze ya mua. Hamefanya ama hakufanya ikue kwa koti. Lakini pia uh, community waweze kuwa na amani kwa sababu waone pia haki imeweza kutendeka. Sentiments echoed by Emmanuel Omondi, a GBV activist in Malindi, who claimed the suspect who happens to be a police officer was being protected. Na hii kesi tulifawad kwa ipoa na DCI. Lakini tunashangazwa kwamba kuna any action ambayo imechukuliwa. Na mtoto bado yuko rescue lakini yule perpetrator bado anatembea eh, free na kuna arrest imefanyika. Another GBV activist Afiswale say they want justice to be served for the minor who now is at the rescue center. Sasa sisi tunataka ni haki itendeke kwa yule mtoto. Mtoto anataka kurudi shule. Ameleme amezegea pale rescue center kwa muda. Ama mambo yake yote amesomo amerudi nyuma kila kitu kime The 16-year-old girl who is yet to join Form 2 was alleged defiled in January this year by the said police officer. Pauline Nassimil for Lunchtime News. 
Elsewhere, several people are fearing for their lives after consuming meat suspected to be infected with anthrax disease in Bushiangala, village Ikolomani constituency in Kakamega County. Elsewhere, a KCPE candidate who scored 311 marks could miss out on secondary education for lack of school fees. The girl, Caroline Muende, is appealing to well-wishers to come to her aid. This and more, the county's roundup. Authorities in Bushiangala village, Ikolumani constituency in Kakamega County have cautioned area residents against consuming uninspected meat. This came following an incident where several people were taken ill after consuming meat which has now been confirmed was infected with anthrax. According to the clinical officer at Shibwe Hospital, Brian Angadia confirmed the treatment of Gilbert Makumba together with, with his two friends in the village after the hospital diagnosis revealed that they were suffering from anthrax disease. Uh, IV, I, IV uh, antibiotics whereby it was gentamicin injection high dose and also we gave, um, we gave him a, a levofloxacin tablets which is supposed to take them for at least seven days. Uh, currently the patient is, is, has responded well. Elsewhere, lack of school fees remains a setback to the national government's 100% education transition policy. Caroline Mwende, who scored 311 marks in her Kenyan Certificate of Primary Education, is yet to join high school weeks after four months reported to school. Mwende's parents do not have money to pay her school fees. I was able to get school fees. Meanwhile, in Kitui County, Eastern Regional Commissioner Evan Sachuki has faulted the slow pace at which River and Zoo Bridge is being constructed. Speaking while he led Eastern Region Development and Coordination Committee in touring several national government projects in the region, Ashoki expressed his dissatisfaction with the slow pace of the construction, warning the constructor he must complete the project within the set timelines. The bridge. Uh, the, we have uh, expressed uh, our desert, dissatisfaction with the pace at which the contractor is moving. And uh, the contractor has assured us that he will uh, replan his work and he would uh, be able in the next three months we should see structures coming up. And uh, so that is what we have agreed with him at the site. And the Kenya Red Cruise Society is partnered with the French Embassy to empower the youth in Mombasa County through an ICT capacity building project. The project offers opportunity to young people for skill development, entrepreneurship and employment through practical social action. Kenya Red Cruise Society Secretary General Asha Mohammed underscored the commitment towards the full realization of the national youth development through ICT. <laughs> ya kuja kujiendeleza kwa maana wengine wana vipawa uh, ambazo pengine ile system ya kawaida ya education haiwapatii nafasi kwa hivyo innovation labs kama hizi zinawapa nafasi vijana kama hawa kuja kujaribu uh, kutengeza vifaa tofauti and finally teachers in the country have been asked to embrace the changes introduced by the teachers service commission tsc which includes teacher professional development Kiricho TSC County Director Grace Mwangi called on teachers from Press CBC saying that teachers must move with the changes and teach what is more relevant. Mwangi was speaking at AHP Workshop Primary School of Finlay's during the awarding of base primary and secondary schools in Finlay's. They can also embrace the CBC because CBC is one of the modules which is being trained in the TPD so that our teachers may not continue using the notes they wrote in college or the notes they wrote 10 years ago. They should keep on embracing the changes and teaching what is more irrelevant. And today looks very beautiful. Let's now shift focus to matters politics where Mandera gubernatorial candidate Mohammed Aidan Halif has promised to improve livelihoods of area residents if elected in the August poll. Mohammed Aidan Halif, who is the current county assembly speaker, will be running on a United Democratic Movement ticket. 
speaking while launching his manifesto to area residents, Khalif promised to tackle two main key areas of education and health if elected for the county top seat come August elections. Mohammed Aden Khalif of United Democratic Movement, UDM, is set to battle the race for governorship against former cabinet secretary Aden Mohammed of Jubilee, Hassan Noor Hassan of ODM, and Ali Noor Eden of UDA. We shall provide equal opportunity for all, for all, equal opportunity for all for our prosperity. My government will focus on broadly on two areas, wealth creation and addressing the basic needs of our people, social protection, number three. Introduce cash transfer programs for 20,000 vulnerable households in the next five years, inshallah. Elsewhere, a section of Luya elders from Migori County have slammed the ODM brigade over their six-piece agenda call. While speaking in West Kanyamkago within Ureri constituency, the elders led by Wycliffe Omenda and Joseph Adair told the ODM party to own up to sharp divisions that emerged after the party primaries. Their sentiments come two days after the ODM party director of elections, Jeanette Mohammed, and a host of the party's dominees had camped in the area to find possible solutions to their political hurdles. It doesn't contain in itself the will of the people. Number two, the reason why we are against the six piece is because we are old people, we are adults, we can decide who leads for us. Nobody, not the party can decide for us who to be our next MCA. Yeah. Yeah. Number three. Number three. It is we the people of South Kanyamkago that know our problems. Sisi kama jami tuna vote viongozi sio chama. Kwa sababu hakuna kitu chama imetujengea South Kanyamkago. Ndio sababu tunataka kiongozi ambaye atatusaidia kwa maendeleo yetu ili tuweze kuendelea mbele. Meanwhile, Naivasha Member of Parliament, Jen Kihara, has lauded the nomination of Martha Karua as a presidential running mate, noting that she was capable of delivering, though she was in the wrong camp. She spoke in Naivasha while launching her campaign bid to retain the parliamentary seat. Sasa, sisi tumeamua, Martha, wea kaa hapo, hatuta tupa mshale kwako, kwa sababu hatutaki kukumiza, Jue ni mtoto wetu lakini tunaona unatumiwa kama ngao pale. We will not accept. Hakikisha zile zeria zimewekwa especially kule Turkana muliona yule governor eh, maneno ya petroli ya madisema 25%. Hizo load hizo zitakuwa applied hapa. <laughs> Finally, the National Council of Churches of Kenya, NCCK, have held a consultative forum with the election stakeholders to deliberate on the country's election preparedness for the forthcoming August 9th polls. Speaking during the election forum, Migori County IEBC coordinator Ben Mosetti noted that the commission is up to the task and has a schedule with the election preparation plans. Kenya is bigger than any other person. Hence, call for peace. And we have decided at least to preach peace in all our churches. And uh, the degree of preparedness is very key. We need even this country after election. <coughs> Hence, uh, today we have gathered here all the stakeholders. And this will be a teamwork for each and every one of us. We are encouraging our candidates to, come, to uh, conduct their campaigns in peace. Let us also have them respect one another. Let us also have them uh, encourage their supporters not to carry weapons during uh, their, their, their campaign meetings so that we can have uh, a campaign that is peaceful, an election that is peaceful, and most importantly, be able to accept the results when they are announced. And still on matters touching on elections, the Kisi Council of Elders has resolved to support President Uhuru Kenyatta's choice of Raila Odinga as preferred candidate for the country's top job when elections are called in August. The Abagusi Culture and Development Council of Elders added that members were free to support contestants of their choice for lower elective seats but will fully back Raila's candidature for president. 
During a meeting at Ekerubo in Masaba South, the council's patron Stephen Mainga invited the president to show them the path to follow in the August polls and said the council will support the government of the day as it has steered the country in a positive economic path. We are supporting the president, the current president, on His Excellency President Uhuru. He will show us wherever he would like us as a community to proceed to. And we are supporting that move of supporting the incoming government, which we will, de will be decided on the 9th of August. Do you have a new story to share with KBC? Get in touch swiftly on email news at kbc.co.ke or call 0723 or 0734-780-124. Jumamosi hii tarehe moja mwezi Juni barabara zote zinaelekea katika tamasha ya Mwa Tonight hapo Nedland Inn huko Malili Konza kutana na watangazaji shupavu wa Mwa FM kama vile Virginia Mwikali, Patrick Musango, David Ngumbao na Eric Makau msanii mashuhuri Kana Niko atakuja kuwatumbuiza usikose kuhudhuria tamasha la Mwa Tonight na Mwa FM Welcome back. Let's proceed. Education Principal Secretary Ambassador Simon Nabukwesi has called upon the society to support needy students in attaining 100% transition from primary to secondary education. While in Transoya, Nabukwesi urged parents and local leaders to desist from exposing school-going children to local brews and instead put them in school. Parents' investment. The State Department for University Education and Research Ambassador Simon Abukwesi was in Trasoya County to support national government's 100% transition of students from primary to secondary schools while issuing admission letters to a section of people at Rafiki and Sango secondary schools. Nabukwesi appealed to parents to support the needy students while in school. He also appealed to leaders in Busia, Bungoma, Transzoia and Kuala counties to desist from exposing school-going children to local brews. The PS later commissioned competence-based curriculum classrooms at St. Michael Top Station Secondary, St. Joseph's Girls, St. Andrews Baraton Secondary and St. Bridget Girls Community Schools. It's not difficult for you to acquire education so that you change your status or add to your family status or improve your family status and be a useful person. Meanwhile, in a rare gesture, a village elder has rallied residents in supporting the needy to get education. Napara village elder Juliet Haemba enrolled a house help to school 
after she found out that the girl was interested in going back to school but lacked the financial capacity to do so. <laughs> Niende tu nifanye kasi nikaambia mwalimu mkuu nikasema huyu mtoto baba yake alikufa na mama yake naye ni mlemavu Irene Mchuma Odim the lunch time news in other news, Bomet County has become the fifth devolved government to launch the spatial plan aimed at sustainable development. The 10-year plan worth 48 million shillings is aimed at guiding sustainable development to ensure the continued environmental protection for current and future generations. Speaking during the launch at his offices, Bomet County Governor Hilary Barchok was optimistic of a bright future, reiterating that fiscal accountability and accessibility shall remain a priority for investment. Bomet is among the top 47 counties that already developed the plan. Other counties include Lamu, Kajiado, Makweni, Baringo, Kericho, with Kilifi underway. But we thank God that we are now joining the lead of five other counties who have in place what we call county spatial plan. There are some counties which are in the arid areas and these ones cannot do a similar plan like Omet or like Neri or others. So we need to encourage people we need the communities to own this special plan so that when it comes to implementing this part of what they want. I'm happy to announce that Bomet County has a forest cover so far of 24.9%, which is the second countrywide. And for your information, Madam Commissioner, the first county is Nyeri County with 40%. <laughs> The Moving on, environmentalists are now urging Kenyans to embrace tree planting culture in order to surpass the 10% government's goal in the country. The enviro environmentalist enthusiast who spoke during the centenary celebrations of International Tree Foundation, ITF, lamented the destruction of indigenous trees, saying at least 140 native tree species are on the brink of extinction. International Tree Foundation celebrated 100 years in existence last evening. The Tree Planting and Reforestation Charity Organization Chief Executive Officer James Whitehead stressed the need for public participation in greening the environment. These sentiments were echoed by the Deputy Chief Conservator of Forest in charge of Conservancy Coordination, Mr. Peter, who underscored the need for communities in conserving the environment. Change happens with practical visionaries. And some of those practical visionaries were our fathers, grandfathers, grandmothers in the past, who had a vision and who stuck to it. And there are practical visionaries in this room. And even this week I've met practical visionaries who are head teachers, who have a vision for their school and the regreening of their school. I've met community members who, have a pract who are practical visionaries, who can envisage a different environment around them and are leaders for change. There is a direct correlation between poverty and environmental degradation or forestry degradation, whatever you want to call it. The more people, the more poor people are, the more degradation you are going to expect. And therefore, it is coming out very clearly that we require to enhance and to improve the livelihoods of the people who have a direct nexus with the resource. The representative of the Principal Secretary of Ministry of Environment and Forestry, Stephen Kingo, called for consulted efforts to increase the Kenya forest cover, which currently stands at 8%, against a 13% tree cover. Marking this day, the Ministry of Environment and Forestry recognizes and appreciates the efforts made by the international
seas and diseases change and this can lead even to some species going into extinction. The Kenya Forest Service received the Forest Conservation Award. Kiambu CFA Alliance was lauded for their good work in social fence and forest restoration. James Madea, Rose Omalwa and Teresa Maina were also among the awardees. Edwin Austin for Lunchtime News. Elsewhere, 10 schools from Laikipia North and Laikipia East participated in a public speaking contest held in Nanyuki Town. The contest, which was held at the library grounds, brought together more than 200 students aiming at improving their public skip speaking skills. Speaking at the event, Laikipia County Commissioner Joseph Kanyiri applauded the organizers, saying that this move will go a long way in shaping the careers of the learners. Cha muhimu kwa wanafunzi sio kwamba uongee mengi, lakini machache na weze kujua sirisha. Tunahimiza wazazi waone hiri suara likiwa muhimu, wafanyibiashara hapa mjini na nyuki, waone suara likiwa muhimu sana kushirikiana na batu kuna wafadhiri wengine, ili kila mwaka, he said that the interaction of the learners and their activity on stage will build up their confidence moving forward. Kutokana na shuguri ya leo, tunaona kwamba tutapata wasomi, tutapata pengine wanasiasa mbao, watakuwa kakamavu kwerezea sera zao, tutapata pengine wale wataweza kwerezea agenda zao, pasipo kuogopa. This occasion that was held here is helping us as students to, ve to develop our confidence and be able to, to interact with other people. As we grow up, it's also giving us the confidence to be able to communicate with large numbers of people. Major Taylor from the British Army Training Unit in Nanyuki encouraged the learners to pursue such endeavors, adding that the research skills they acquire will help them to be competent public speakers in future. You know, the skills that they learn from today and the confidence that they get, the research skills, hopefully through the library, and the, uh, and, and the confidence that they will gain to do public speaking in the future, and also the ability to look at things from different points of view um, will help you know, uh, reduce that of uh, conflict resolution or increase that of conflict resolution. Beatrice Wangare from the Ministry of Education said that the topics that they selected for the students will help them improve on their studies in subjects like biology and computer studies. The basis of uh, the program today is to help us um, uh, more or less um, give uh, some, uh, some uh, insight to the students, uh, give them a chance to improve their public speaking. Beatrice Getonyenge Teach, Lunchtime News. It's time to play now. And if you have been following the UEFA Nations League, Last night, Kylian Mbappe rescued France a point in Austria as the world champions remain winless in the Nations League after a one all draw against Austria. France has just two points from three Group A one games. Mbappe, on a second half substitute, finished smartly after a lightning break from the visitors led to the equaliser on 83 minutes. Bristol City striker Andreas Weyman had earlier scored his first international goal to threaten an upset. France has just two points from three Group A1 games. In other games, Croatia outshined Denmark by a 1-0 defeat in Group 3C. Slovakia scored 1-0 against Azerbaijan. Belarus drew 1-1 with Kazakhstan. And in Group D1, Latvia scored 4-2 against Moldova, while Andorra won 2-1 against Liechtenstein. Tonight, England will face Italy, Hungary plays Germany in Group A3. In Group A4, Netherlands will tackle Poland while Wales meet Belgium. And Stephen Curry shaked off injury to score 43 points for the Golden State Warriors as they beat Boston Celtics 107-97 in Game 4 to level NBA Finals at 2-2. Game 5 of the series will be played on Tuesday in San Francisco. Tatum with a three. Golden State Warriors are level with Boston Celtics 2-2 in Game 4 of the NBA Finals. Good. 
Thompson comes off the screen. Got it. Three pointer for Clay Thompson. Boston led 9 to 90 with just over 5 minutes left, but 10 consecutive points helped the Warriors to victory. Green by Draymond Green. Tatum turns, shoots and scores. Curry scored 7 three points from 14 attempts and did not appear troubled by a left foot injury sustained in the game 3 of the best of 7 series. Clay Thompson scored 18 points for the Warriors. While teammate Andrew Wings contributed 17 points and a career high of 16 rebounds. Curry is averaging 3.3 points in the series and has made 25 of 51 three points attempts. Meanwhile, Jason Tatum had 23 points, 11 rebounds, 6 assists, and 3 blocked shots for the Celtics. Game 5 of the series will be played on Tuesday in San Francisco. And before we wrap it up, let me take you through one more story where Gatundu North farmers have received over 5,000 macadamia nut seedling, seedlings, I beg your pardon, aimed at helping them increase production, boost the country's, our, the county's economic and increase forest cover in the region. The farmers said the gesture is a great source of income and empowerment that would benefit even generations to come. In the distribution of the macadamia seedlings, Tika Town MP Patrick Renaina, who is also eyeing the Kiambu gubernatorial seat, said that macadamia farming would help boost the county's future economy. Hila ukulima tunaleta kiambu sasa nila ukulima tunasema high value. Hii ukulima wa mahindi, ukulima wa, 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 wa viazi, ukulima wa maharagwe. Tunaleta tukiwambia wa kulima. Hii ni kitu abayo ni mzuri kulima hizo vitu kwa sababu ni chakula kweli. Lakini uh, ukienda kama unataka kilimo biashara, kilimo biashara ni hii ya makadamia na avocado. Wainina urged farmers to disregard all forms of middlemen and only sell their produce to legitimate companies. Speaking at Gachege Shopping Center where the distribution happened, the farmers took issue with unscrupulous traders who they said have been amassing riches through avocado and macadamia exports at the expense of their toil. Makoro, ma, hii inaito avocado na inakuja na buroka inatufinya hata utupati kitu lakini tukipata mtu atakuja kutunululia ikiwa hasa tuna buroka yo majabo utakuwa mzuri badala ya kupatia mia moja mnaenda hata mnapigana kwa sababu ya pesa tumefurahia siku ya leo kupatia miti ya mkadania that's all the time we had for KBC Lunchtime News. Of course, uh, more news in our subsequent bulletin at 7 and also at 9. And speaking of time, remember it's precious. Spend it with the right people. My name is Ben Troy Njue, Byron Abuli. So Dr. Mtazamaji hujambo na karibu sana katika makala ya kipindi dunia wiki hii. Kipindi ambacho kinaangazia taarifa za kimataifa kutoka kila pembe kote ulimwenguni kwa ushirikiano wa shirika la utangazaji nchini KBC na shirika la Shinhua kutoka China unapokea taarifa hizi. Katika makala ya Jumahili, Rais Putni wa Urusi yasema nchi hiyo itafanya maamuzi yake iwapo Marekani itawasilisha makombora ya masafa marefu kwa Ukraine huku mzozo huo ukizorotesha hali kote duniani. 
Kadhalika waziri mkuu wa Uingereza Boris Johnson anusurika kura ya kutokuwa eh, kutokuwa na imani naye. Na shirika la WHO lasema vifo vinavyotokana na janga la COVID-19 barani Afrika vitapungua kwa asilimia ya 94 mwaka huu. Kadhalika barani Afrika jumuiya ya ECOWAS yapinga kipindi cha mpito cha miezi 36 kilichopendekezwa na viongozi wa kijeshi nchini gini. Na Rais Joe Biden wa Marekani alihimiza bunge la Congress kuchukua hatua dhidi ya ghasia zinazotekelezwa kwa kutumia bunduki. Ndizo baadhi tu ya taarifa japo kiducho ambazo nimekuandalia mchana wa leo tunde sawa kadisa mati wa kipindi dunia wiki hii. Karibu sana mimi ni Isaac Lemoka na tuanze na taarifa yetu ya kwanza ambapo Rais Vladimir Putin wa Urusi amesema kwenye mahojiano yaliyopeperushwa moja kwa moja kwamba nchi hiyo itafanya maamuzi na kushambulia maeneo zaidi nchini Ukraine iwapo Marekani itawasilisha makombora ya masafa marefu nchini Ukraine. Rais Joe Biden wa Marekani alitangaza kuwa nje hiyo itawasilisha kwa Ukraine makombora ya hali ya juu yaliyoitishwa na Ukraine. Kitengo cha habari cha rais wa Ukraine kilisema kuwa rais Volodymyr Zelensky alizuru maeneo ya vita ya jeshi la Ukraine huko Zaraposia kusini ya nchi hiyo ambapo alishauriana na wanajeshi. Na vyombo vya habari vya Ukraine viliripoti kuwa Rais Vladimir Zelensky alisema hata shauriana na pande kutoka nje kuhusiana na mpango wa amani ili kukomesha mzozo baina ya nchi hiyo na Urusi kwani kuna nchi zinashinikiza Ukraine kubali mikataba ambayo haitaisaidia. Nayo wizara ya mashauri ya nchi za kigeni ya Urusi litangaza kwamba raia na moja zaidi wa Marekani wamezuiwa kuingia nchini Urusi kufuatia vikwazo vilivyowekewa nchi hiyo hivi majuzi na Marekani. Wakati huo huo katibu mkuu wa moja mataifa Antonio Guterres alionya kwamba mzozo huo huenda ukasababisha uhaba mkubwa wa chakula utakaoathiri zaidi nchi zinazostawi. Alisema mzozo huo unasababisha mateso makubwa na unafaa kukomeshwa mara moja. Shirika la Umoja Mataifa kuhusu chakula na kilimo FAO linasema kuwa Urusi na Ukraine ndizo huuza ngano kwa wingi zaidi duniani na pia shairi na mahindi. Na ripoti zinasema kuwa ongezeko kubwa la bei hasa za kawi na vyakula litatatiza ukuaji wa kiuchumi barani Ulaya mwaka huu. Na rais wa benki ya maendeleo barani Afrika Akunwimu Adesina alisema kuwa mzozo wa Urusi na Ukraine utaathiri vibaya sekta za kilimo na kawi barani Afrika. Africa imports 30 million metric tons of wheat and maize from Ukraine and Russia. That will no longer be coming. Second, Africa imports a lot of fertilizers from both countries. Nikiripotia dunia wiki hii mimi ni John Madanji. Waziri mkuu wa Uingereza Boris Johnson alinusurika kura ya kutokuwa na imani naye iliyoandaliwa na chama chake cha Conservative. Johnson aliungwa mkono na wabunge 211 kati ya 359 hii ikiwa idadi kubwa zaidi ya kura 180 zilizo hitajika kumpa ushindi kwa mujibu wa matokeo yaliyotangazwa na mwenyekiti wa kundi la wabunge wa chama cha conservative Graham Brady kura hiyo kuhusiana na uongozi wa Johnson ilijiri baada ya idadi ya wabunge waliowasilisha barua za hoja ya kutokuwa na imani naye zilizowasilishwa kwa Brady kufikia hamsina nne kufuatia ushindi huo Johnson hata kabiliwa na kura nyingine kama hiyo kwa muda wa mwaka mmoja kwa kuambatana na kanuni za chama hicho. Waziri huyo mkuu amekumbwa na utata kuhusiana na sakata ya kuandaa dhifa wakati wa vikwazo vya kudhibiti msambao wa COVID-19 na mwaka wa 2021. Alitozwa faini na maafisa wa polisi nchini humo mwezi Aprili kwa kuhudhuria dhifa na hivyo kumfanya waziri mkuu kwanza katika historia ya nchi hiyo kuadhibiwa kwa kuvunja sheria. Licha ya ushindi huo, wapinzani wake wa kisiasa walisema ni dhahiri kwamba kuna msukosuko katika chama cha conservative kwani kura 148 dhidi yake ni kumaanisha kwamba zaidi ya 40% ya wabunge wa chama hicho wanataka aondoke. 
nikiripotia makala ya dunia wiki hii naitwa Safin Acheng Ouma Mjumbe kutoka Hungary Saba Korosi alichaguliwa kuwa rais wa kikao kijacho cha saba cha baraza kuu la umoja wa mataifa Korosi alichaguliwa bila kupingwa na ataanza wadhifa huo mwezi Septemba mwaka huu kumrithi rais wa baraza hilo Abdullah Shahid kutoka Maldives kwenye hotuba yake kwa baraza hilo baada ya kuchaguliwa Korosi alitaja masuala matano atakayo yapo muhimu wakati wa rais wake yakiwemo kudumisha kanuni za kimsingi za mkataba umoja mataifa kuhakikisha ufanisi katika mabadiliko endelevu kuleta suluhu kuimarisha ujukumu la sayansi katika kufanya maamuzi na kuimarisha umoja ili kukabiliana na mizozo inayokumba ulimwengu Alisema kwa mizozo duniani imekuwa mikali huku ya mkini watu milioni 333 wakihitaji kwa dharura misaada ya kibinadamu na ulinzi katika nchi tisa na kwamba mzozo nchini Ukraine unazidisha changamoto hizo. Shahid alimpongeza Korosi akisema kuwa ana ujuzi mkubwa baada ya kuhudumu kwa takriban miaka 44 akiwa mjumbe wa nchi yake. Korosi alizaliwa mwaka 1958 kwa sasa ni mkurugenzi kuhusu endelevu wa mazingira katika afisi ya rais wa Hungary amehudumu katika nyadhifa nyingi nchini mwake na kama balozi na pia mwakilishi wa kudumu katika umoja mataifa wakati huo huo kwenye hotuba yake katibu mkuu umoja mataifa Antonio Guterres alisema kuwa kikao cha saba cha baraza hilo kuu kitakuwa cha mabadiliko na kuimarisha ushirikiano wa kimataifa we face a world in peril from the war in Ukraine in all its dimensions to the deepening impacts of the climate crisis from the covid-19 pandemic to escalating humanitarian needs hunger and poverty the months ahead will test the multilateral system and the general assembly is central to everything we do alimsifu korosi akisema ana imani kwamba ataleta mabadiliko makubwa wakati wa rais wake tom madenji dunia wiki hii na mkutano wa umoja wa mataifa kuhusu mazingira uliandaliwa jijini Stockholm, Sweden ambapo wito ulitolewa kwa hatua za dharura zinazojumuisha jamii zote kukabiliana na athari za mabadiliko ya hali ya anga. Mkutano huu ambao maudhui yake ni sayari yenye afya kwa ustawi wa wote, wajibu wetu, fursa yetu ulijiri wakati ambapo ulimwengu unakabiliwa na changamoto tatu kuu za mabadiliko ya hali ya anga, kuangamia kwa mimea na viumbe na uchafuzi. Uliandaliwa miaka hamsini baada ya Sweden kuandaa kongamano la kwanza la umoja wa mataifa kuhusu mazingira ya kibinadamu mwaka mbili. Katibu mkuu wa umoja wa mataifa Antonio Guterres alionya kwamba ulimwengu unakabiliwa na hatari kwani hatua kabambe hazijachukuliwa kuhifadhi mazingira. Hafla hiyo ya siku mbili iliyoandaliwa na umoja wa mataifa nchini Sweden kwa ufadhili wa serikali ya Kenya pia ilikuwa kigezo cha utekelezaji wa muongo wa umoja wa mataifa wa kutimiza malengo yake ya maendeleo endelevu. Kwingineko Ethiopia iliadhimisha siku ya mazingira duniani ikiahidi kuimarisha juhudi za utunzaji mazingira ili kabiliana na athari za mabadiliko ya hali ya anga. Takwimu zinaonyesha kwamba Ethiopia hutoa asilimia 0.04 pekee ya gesi ya carbon lakini inaathirika zaidi kutokana na mabadiliko ya hali ya anga inayotegemea zaidi mvua kutoka kilimo. Nchi hiyo imeratibu sera kuhusu kuhimili athari za mabadiliko ya hali ya anga na shughuli za kiuchumi zinazohifadhi mazingira huku ikitekeleza juhudi za upanuzi wa miti. Good morning, na nchini India zaidi ya waendeshaji baiskeli alfu tano walishiriki mbio za baiskeli zilizoandaliwa na maafisa wa polisi jijini Mumbai wakati wa maadhimisho ya siku ya mazingira duniani. Hii ni katika juhudi za kuwahimiza watu zaidi kutumia baiskeli kama mbinu ya usafiri. Siku ya mazingira duniani huandaliwa tarehe tano mwezi Juni kila mwaka na shirika la UNEP na iliadhimishwa mara ya kwanza mwaka elfu moja sabina nne. Nikiripotia dunia wiki hii mimi ni Zainab Said. Nchi mbalimbali zimeendeleza juhudi za kukabiliana na kudhibiti janga la COVID-19 ukiwemo utoaji chanjo. Shirika la afya duniani WHO lilisema kuwa vifo vinavyotokana na janga la COVID-19 barani Afrika linatarajiwa kupungua kwa takriban 94% mwaka huu ikilinganishwa na mwaka 2021 ambapo janga hilo lilikuwa hatari zaidi. 
uchanganuzi huo wa shirika la WHO uliochapishwa kwenye jarida la kisayansi la Lancet unaashiria kwamba takriban vifo 2023 vinatarajiwa barani humo kufikia mwisho wa mwaka huu huku visa vya maambukizi vikikadiriwa kupungua kwa robo mwaka kwa mujibu wa taarifa ya ofisi ya shirika la WHO kuhusu Afrika. The new analysis anticipates a decline of almost 94% in that number for the region by the end of 2022. Uchanganuzi huo unabainisha kwamba bara la Afrika liliripoti vifo 1113102 mwaka 2021 kupitia njia rasmi hata hivyo takriban kifo kimoja kati ya vitatu havikuripotiwa na hivyo idadi sahihi ya vifo ni takriban 1350 Jenga hilo lilikuwa hatari zaidi barani Afrika mwaka uliopita huku likikisiwa kuwa chanzo cha saba kikuu cha vifo chini ya ugonjwa wa malaria ilhali mwaka 2020 virusi hivyo vilikuwa chanzo cha 22 kikuu cha vifo barani humo ongezeko la vifo lilitokana na aina ya delta ambayo huambukizwa kwa haraka zaidi na jiji la Beijing chini China halijaripoti kisa chochote cha maambukizi ya ugonjwa huo katika siku za hivi majuzi tangu ugonjwa huo ulipozuka tena jijini humo biashara na shule jijini humo zimefunguliwa tena huku hatua zikichukuliwa kwa kinga wanafunzi shuleni dhidi ya maambukizi na tuelekee huko Dominican ambapo waziri wa mazingira wa Jamhuri ya Dominican Orlando George Mera Aliwawa kwa kupigwa risasi afisini mwake na mpiganaji mmoja aliyetajwa kuwa rafiki yake wa kibinafsi kwa mujibu wa afisi ya rais. Kwenye taarifa afisa huyo alisema kuwa Miguel Cruz ambaye ni rafiki wa kibinafsi wa marehemu waziri huyo alikamatwa na kuzuiliwa na idara ya polisi na wizara ya umma. Serikali ya Jamhuri hiyo ilipeleka ramirami zake kwa familia ya waziri huyo ikisema kuwa kisa hicho kinachunguzwa na matokeo yake yatatangazwa. Duru za Wizara ya Mazingira zinazonukuliwa na gazeti la kila siku la Asento zilisema kuwa mshambulizi huyo aliingia kwenye afisi ya Mera akiwa peke yake na baadaye milio ya risasi sita ikasikika. Kufuatia kisa hicho, wahudumu kwenye wizara hiyo waliondolewa huku ambulenzi na polisi wa Doria wakiwasili kwenye eneo hilo. Mera wa umri wa miaka tano alikuwa mwanawe rais wa zamani wa Jamhuri ya Dominican, Salvador Jorge Blanco, aliyetawala nchi hiyo ya Caribbean baina ya mwaka 1982 na mwaka 1986. Aliteuliwa kuwa waziri mwanzoni mwa kipindi cha kuhudumu cha rais Luis Abinader mwezi Agosti mwaka 2020 ambapo aliahidi kuhakikisha uwajibikaji katika matumizi ya mali asili, utunzaji na uhifadhi mifumo ekolojia, kupunguzwa kwa uchafuzi na ushughulikiaji bora wa taka. Nchini Marekani Rais Joe Biden wa Marekani alihimiza bunge la Congress kuchukua hatua dhidi ya ghasia zinazotekelezwa kwa bunduki alipohutubu katika ikulu ya White House nchini Marekani. How many more innocent American lives must be taken before we say enough? Enough. Aliyasema hayo wakati ambapo nchi hiyo imeshuhudia visa kadhaa vya mauaji yanayotekelezwa kwa bunduki katika muda wa majuma kadhaa yaliyopita. Biden alizuru eneo la Uvalde, Texas, kukutana na familia za wadhiriwa na manusura wa tukio la ufiatuaji risasi shuleni tarehe 24 mwezi uliopita ambapo mpiganaji aliyeuawa na maafisa wa usalama aliwaua watoto 19 na walimu wawili kwa kutumia bunduki. Wabunge wa vyama vya Democratic na Republican wanajadili hatua za marekebisho ya matumizi ya bunduki huku kamati ya bunge hilo ikiidhinisha sheria kadhaa kuhusu udhibiti wa matumizi ya bunduki. Shirika moja lisilo la kiserikali nchini humo lilisema kwamba kufikia sasa mwaka huu nchi hiyo imeshuhudia visa 233 vya ufiatuaji risasi huku zaidi ya vifo 1018 vikiripotiwa kuna takriban bunduki milioni 400 baina ya polisi, jeshi na raia nchini Marekani huko zaidi ya bunduki milioni 393 kati ya hizo zinamilikiwa na raia kwa mujibu wa ripoti iliyotolewa mwaka 2018 kuhusu umiliki wa bunduki duniani. Andrew Kero, katika makala yetu ya Dunia Wiki. Na, na kwa taarifa hiyo basi Dunia Wiki hii inakwenda kwenye mapumziko mafupi sana. Wewe usiende mbali nikirejea bado ninazo taarifa lukuki za kimataifa.
so far so good tunakushukuru sana ewe mpenzi wa kipindi cha Bridge over Congo na KBC Channel 1 kwa ujumla kwa hiyo mpenzi wa rumba mpenzi wa muziki ya Afrika kipindi kipendacho cha Bridge over Congo kitakuwa kinakuja kila siku ya Jumamosi kuanzia saa moja na nusu ya jioni hadi saa mbili na nusu ya jioni majira ya Afrika Mashariki Nzoko lembaka nina na eti yani dovu hachoshwi kamwe na pembe zake make a date this sato utanipata mimi le grand polygamista simion mfumo kimbangu na wini marie jose ambapo toko tunafanya fimbo fimbo chama mwa as times changes technologies grow And so you need to be in the know. We are looking into matters technology and education. We bring you updates in tech news the world over. Exciting features, exceptional Kenyan innovations and very informative interviews. Join me, Stephanie Ayeta and Grace Gedaiga as we serve you with only the best tech updates the world over. Every Saturday from 4 p.m. only on KBC Channel 1. Karibu katika awamu hii ya pili ya kipindi dunia wiki hii kwa ushirikiano wa shirika la utangazaji nchini KBC na shirika la Shinhua kutoka China unapokea taarifa hizi za kimataifa au ya pili inang'ananga sasa Na katika awamu hii ya pili tuanze na taarifa kuhusiana na viongozi wa jumuiya ya kiuchumi ya mataifa ya Afrika yani ECOS walikataa pendekezo la viongozi wa kijeshi nchini gini kuhusu kipindi cha mpito cha sita kwa mujibu wa tume ya jumuiya hiyo Rais wa tume ya ECOWAS Jean Claude Kasibrow alisema kuwa jumuiya hiyo iliahirisha kutekelezwa kwa vikwazo dhidi ya gini kufuatia mapinduzi ya kijeshi mwaka uliopita kwani viongozi wa gini walikuwa wameomba muda zaidi ili kuwasilisha ratiba ya mpito alitoa wito wa mashauriano nchini gini kushughulikia mzozo wa kijamii na kiuchumi baina ya serikali mashirika ya kijamii na makundi mengine mnamo tarehe 5 mwezi Septemba mwaka uliopita luteni kanali mama D Domboya alitangaza kwamba vikosi vyake vimemkamata rais Alpha Konde na kuvunja serikali na taasisi za kitaifa Jumuiya ya ECOWAS ilichukua hatua mara moja kwa kusitisha wanachama wa gini na kutangaza vikwazo dhidi ya viongozi wa mapinduzi hayo ya serikali. Tom Madenji, Dunia wiki hii. Na, na huko Israel jeshi la Israel liliwaua wa Palestina wawili kwenye ukingo wa magharibi ya mto Jordan na kufikisha wanne idadi ya wale waliouawa kwa mujibu wa maafisa wa Kipalestina. Wizara ya Afya ya Kipalestina iliyo mjini Ramala kwenye taarifa kwa vyombo vya habari ilisema kuwa mvulana wa umri wa miaka 17 aliuawa kwa kupigwa risasi katika kijiji cha Almedia magharibi ya Ramala vikosi vya Israel pia vilimuua mtu mmoja kwenye kambi ya wakimbizi ya al Deishe kusini ya Bethlehem vile vile vikosi hivyo vilimuua mwanamke mmoja kwenye lango la kambi ya wakimbizi ya Al Arub viungani mwa jiji la Hebron kwa kisingizia kwamba alikuwa ameelekea kwa wanajeshi hao akiwa na kisu vikosi hivyo pia vilimuua mtu mwingine wakati wa shambulizi kwenye eneo la kaskazini ya ukingo wa magharibi ya mto Jordan katika kijiji cha Yabad karibu na Jenin Wizara ya nchi za kigeni ya Wapalestina ilitoa wito kwa jamii ya kimataifa kuingilia kati na kukomesha mauaji ya Wapalestina yanayotekelezwa na Israel. Vikosi hivyo pia vililipua nyumba ya Dea Hamarshe katika kijiji cha Yabad, magharibi ya jiji la Jenin, vikimshtumu kwa kuwaua Waisraeli watano katika kisa cha ufiatiwaji risasi jijini Tel Aviv mwishoni mwa mwezi Machi. Kwenye jeshi la Israel lilizima maandamano ya kupinga hatua ya Israel 
ya kukaa kwenye maeneo ya Palestina yaliyoanzia jijini Tubas kaskazini ya bonde la Jordan katika ukingo wa magharibi kwa mujibu wa taarifa ya Palestina walioshuhudia tukio hilo kwa shirika la Xinhua. Nikiripotia makala ya dunia wiki hii naitwa Safin Aching Oma. Nchini Bangladesh, yamkini watu 37 waliaga dunia baada ya moto kuzuka na milipuko kutokea kwenye gala la makasha katika eneo la Chatogram nchini Bangladesh umbali wa kilomita 242 kutoka jiji kuu Dhaka kwa mujibu wa afisa mmoja mkuu. Moto huu ulizuka kwenye mojawepo wa makasha yaliyopakiwa kemikali katika gala la makasha huko Sitakunda, viungani mwa Chatogram. Mkuu wa eneo hilo Mohamed Mominur Rahma aliarifu shirika la Jingwa kwa njia ya simu kwamba idadi ya watu waliowaga dunia ilifikia 37 baada ya watu 23 zaidi kuaga dunia kutokana na majeraha. Alisema kwa ya mkini wengine miambili walipata majeraha ya kuchomeka kufuatia moto huo uliozuka katika gala la kibinafsi la makasha la kampuni inayomilikiwa na 